Philippians chapter 4 is where we're at uh, today. Uh, we're going to look at the idea of radical generosity. Radical generosity. In the Old Testament, uh, in the book of Leviticus, you find... Oh, golly. How many of you have read the book of Leviticus? Just give me a hand raise. Don't be ashamed if you haven't. Don't lie if you haven't or whatever. A few of you have. How many of you have started Leviticus and it just got so bad you couldn't finish it? Honest people. Yes. I mean, it's tough. You know, but there's some really... When you... You got to learn some things behind Leviticus and it helps you because honestly, some of it is very boring, right? And repetitive. But if you understand that God was communicating not only to the people of Israel, but even to us through that story, this idea of holiness and what holiness is all about. Uh, maybe then you can get a better idea of what it's all about. For instance, the fellowship offering or the thank offering. Um, so this great expression of giving thanks to God through this special sacrifice that is put on this really holy grill, if you will, and it's burnt up or, it, you know, it goes up to God with a sweet smell, you know? And uh, so anyhow, Paul talks about it today and he kind of uses that Old Testament background of this wonderful thank offering. For instance, if you had a baby or if you... Um, you know, I had something in which you felt like you were blessed. You gave this thank offering to God. See, because you have this inner expression. You just want to thank God. And, and it's all in this physical sacrifice. And you can see it and smell it. And this sweet smelling sacrifice. And so Paul's going to use this. Now, before I even get into Philippians chapter 4, um, I have to begin with a personal thank you. That really, even though you're sitting here in this room, it's going out to you, but it's going out to all the believers that have blessed my life for... I, Patty Ann, i got to do the math, and it's getting harder all the time, both because it's longer and I'm older. Um, November 15, 1981, so they make this almost like 29 years, Right? Almost 29 years. I have been so blessed. Uh, blessed by Christians from all over, literally the world. And I'm just so thankful. And, and to see, and not necessarily blessing me directly, but blessing other Christians. You know, they do so much for so many people. And I've seen it through the years, and it just to me is overwhelming. Overwhelmingly good. Um, and I, it's just a wonderful feeling that it conjures up when I can just focus on that. All the good that people have done and I've seen due to others uh, throughout the last almost 30 years. The generosity, the sacrifice. You know, I've seen people pull $100 bills out of their pocket and give it to people and they don't think they're being seen. They're doing it, you know, anonymously and giving up cars and even houses and, and just their life, their time efforts over and over again, giving to the Lord. Ray Bolts came out with a song, I don't know how many years ago, thank you for giving to the Lord. I can't watch that thing without getting all emotional. I don't know about you. You know, he covers a couple areas. For instance, you taught me in that Sunday school, or you're that missionary that came. But there's so many. I mean, obviously a song can't be that long, right? But he goes on and talks about thank you for giving to the Lord. Obviously, the most awesome one is when you're in heaven and someone is going to come up and hug your neck and they're going to say thank you thank you for giving to the Lord and you're going to say who are you <laughs> oh don't you know that you did this and you did this and this happened and now I'm here because of what you did thank you for giving to the Lord always gets me uh, welled up but you guys have done more than you can even imagine you have blessed me more than I can imagine. And if I began to list, I wouldn't be able to capture everything in which you have done that's so good. And you've done it for the Lord. But in doing it to each other, you've done it for the Lord. I think about week in, week out, people who visit those joy boxes over there. And they put their sacrifice and they're giving that sacrifice to the Lord, week in, week out, making the whole mission in New Song work. I think about folks who have given sacrificially to Living Water Mission. You don't even know those people over in Kenya. But you know they're God's people. 
and he loves them and they're in need and you're giving to that to celebrate recovery uh, a, a mission that's going on here in, in the city of Tecumseh, Celebrate Recovery Tecumseh is, and, and across uh, the United States and the world. Uh, the Gaffner Mission, other mission works, benevolence that's going on, whether it's through the church or whether it's through you individually and no one else knows about it. I think about this worship team that gets up here every single Sunday, and, and I know the type of sacrifice that goes on and all that they give, and, and they just give of themselves in front of you all. You know, I like, I'll make a practical example. Who of you wants to come on up, stand up here, and give a lesson today? A sermon? Lead us in a song? Just come on up right now. Are you serious? No, no takers? No, and you can't, you can't volunteer, Jim. I saw you starting to make a move. You can't make, you know, because you guys are doing that. But hopefully a little you probably got a little fear and panic immediately in your heart. It's like, Psh, I can't do that. These guys give of themselves. You know, it's not like they're standing up here performing. That's not what they're doing. They're giving of themselves in worship and leading us to that same end. And all that they give of their time, getting ready, worshiping, praying, preparing. I think of all the work that went into that fellowship that is so important where we're gathered together. And Vera and her team and all that they did to get that together because God says it's a good thing for us to be together and to live together. You know the difference? There's a big difference between a crowd or in, in the church. You can have a crowd down at the theater. You don't have to have anything to do with anybody else there. Participate in the same movie, but you have no intersecting of your lives. So many people do church that way. That's not how God called it to be. He called us to know and love and care about one another. And we do that here as we're doing this corporate worship. We do that when we gather in a field running around in high heels and dresses or whatever we do, you know, when we're doing it together. Um, that's that sharing that God calls us to. And, and the prayer team, and they're every week giving of themselves, coming out. Come on, we, we're here. We're ready to pray God's power into you. The, the setup team, Sonny, here, he's here every morning, like right at 8 o'clock, and Herb and all the guys that come with him, and Owen and everybody. And they'll be here after everybody's gone. You know, sometimes people just leave and they're going. What happens to everything? Well, there's some folks that are here every week taking care of that. Teachers who are preparing for their lessons. My goodness, I, I could go on and on and on. It's just like, this is kind of a short little thank you note from Tom. Just my little thank you note. Um, but not just you guys sitting here because there's some folks that are giving, they're not here today and, and, and then beyond you for, you know, 30 years. It's just, it's just amazing. And so Paul, that's what this whole letter in Philippians is about. You realize that it's a thank you note with a bunch of teaching in it as well. He's thanking the church at Philippi. He loves them dearly and he's sending them this thank you note because of the gift that they have given to Paul. And Paul says, man, your gift smells good. Let me read it in context, okay? Philippians chapter 4, beginning in verse 14, as he's continuing. And really, this is part of the, um, the general um, topic that he began last week, or we should say in verse 10. He says, yet it was good of you, check that out, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. You know, that is so it. This whole idea of Christian giving is it's good that we get to share in the struggles and the challenges and the, and the troubles of life together. We do it together. Not just the fun. Verse 15, Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia... Not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid again and again when I was in need. Not that I'm looking for a gift, but I am looking for what may be credited to your account. I've received full payment and even more. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gift you sent. 